Hi, welcome to Midnight Farmhouse. I'm Leanne, and if you're new to my channel, I do cooking and baking from scratch, canning and dehydrating videos. If that sort of thing interests you, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm canning green beans today and I thought I'd bring you along and I filled my sink with cold water I agitated the green beans in there make sure all the dirt and blossoms are off any bugs that might be on it because when you're canning your harvest you want to make sure it's in pristine condition you don't want any bug holes on them because that might jeopardize your jar. So you want to cut them into about one inch pieces according to the directions and the Presto manual that came with your canner or the ball book. And I have about a bushel to snap, so I better get to snapping. Because I might. take all day to just snap beans if I don't hurry. Now, I've seen people take this part off. It eats just as well as any other part of it, so I don't bother trying to cut that off. So I have a pie plate here to put my scraps in, and I got my big bowl to fill my green beans in. It's a beautiful day outside. It rained yesterday. So, I've been canning green beans along my mom's side since I could reach the counter. <laughs> my job when we would can green beans as a kid was to de bubble and take the knife around the outside of the jar and make sure there was no air bubbles in it. That's my earliest canning memory. Now that this pot's gonna go by. Knocking the alfalfa down for hay, I guess. I think it's the second cutting. But yeah. I think I have at least 40 years experience canning green beans. We would can at least 100 quarts a year growing up. All right, this is how I snip them. I just have a rhythm. I think you just get faster over time. Now my husband would grab a couple at a time. I don't know how he does it, but he beats me done by grabbing them like this. And I don't know. You just gotta find your flow, I guess, as I would say in the restaurant business. You want to figure out your speed of service, if that makes sense. You gotta figure out what makes it faster for you. Like sitting down, I would think I was on vacation. And <laughs> I don't, well, the last time I was on vacation, I was quilting. And that isn't exactly relaxing to most people. But, you know, it's the company, I guess. But I haven't had a vacation with my husband since our honeymoon, which was six years ago next week. Or the week after that. Yeah. Because we got married 
the last Saturday in July. And see that kind of stuff? I want to put that in my jar. And these are the nicest beans we've ever had. And my husband doesn't know which Friday they were. <laughs> because he planned them when I wasn't around with my journal. Go figure. You should always write down what you plant. Always wash your jars with hot soapy water no more than 10 minutes before you can your product. When it comes to food safety, I use a dedicated jar brush to clean my jars. I clean nothing else but jars with this brush. Next, you're going to need to get a pot of water going to boil so you can pour that over your green beans after you've filled the jars with green beans. Now, I'm only going to mention this just because I know somebody that doesn't know this. A pot of water is not going to boil as fast as a pot with a lid on it. Did you know this? Wow, you're smart. All right, our green beans are ready to go in the jar, and yes, I have a dishwasher without a front door at the moment. You gotta love it. All right, here's our checklist before we start canning. You wanna make sure your canner is clean, free of any debris. You wanna check your vent pipe. You wanna make sure your plug is clean and not clogged. And you wanna have your boiling water going. And you need your salt if you're using it, your rings, your lids, a ladle, paper towel, your jars that are obviously been washed, and your green beans and a, I prefer a spring loaded jar lifter. I highly recommend those. And as Mouse Toast would say, make sure you use your Pokey Joe. I should mention that I raw pack my green beans just because my mom always did. With raw pack, you want to make sure you are packing tightly because when they cook, they're going to shrink and the air that's in them is going to come to the surface and that's why headspace is so important in your jars and with hot pack method you are going to cook your green beans five minutes and you're going to pack those loosely into the jars and then you want to pound your jar onto the counter like somebody owes you money and if you have countertops like I do make sure you have some padding in between I think my mom would disapprove of this she taught me to take my open palm of my hand and place the jar on top of that and tap it against the jar. You want to make sure your green beans do not come over that bottom ring of your jar. That's because that will account for your head space. You want to make sure when you have that water in there, there is no green beans poking up out of that water. Like you don't want to see that shark in the ocean, so you don't want to see your green bean in your jar poking up through. Then you want to debubble using your pokey joe and making sure you get all that air out of there. I am very, excuse my French, anal about getting those air bubbles out. I really, really try my best just because I am I worry about siphoning. I'm making sure that the jar gets sealed and I'm very cautious about making sure I do get all the air out. And I'm persnickety when it comes to measuring headspace, so I want to make sure my debubbler is level on the jar straight up and down and making sure the water is just touching the bottom of my of the pokey joe. So make sure you have no buoys or no sharks sticking out of your water when you're filling up your jars. Then we're going to take our paper towel and wipe the tops off. And I might be the only one that doesn't use vinegar when 
we're wiping the rims around. I just haven't found it necessary, quite honestly. Then we're gonna put it into the canner we go and fill the next jar. Salt is optional for flavor. I am just started not putting it in just to see if it helps with our health. Make sure your rims are immaculate and have no chips or cracks in them because you don't want to compromise the quality of your jar. And make sure you don't put that ring on cranked hard, just enough where it will stop moving on the jar. All right, we've been venting for almost 10 minutes. You want it to look like this the whole 10 minutes. You're trying to get all the air out of your canner and build up steam. And you gotta wait 10 minutes as it's doing this to make it safe. All right, timer's gone off and we're just gonna place the weight on and we're gonna wait till it jiggles like crazy, then we're going to bring it back down to a nice raw, then we're going to count our 25 minutes. All right, you see how it's wiggling? That's when you want to start your 25 minutes. You don't want it going too fast and you want it to be doing something. So this is where you would start your timer. And I'm going to set a second timer because you never know what's going to happen. Even though if the sky's clear, you never know when your electric's going to go out. All right, my 25 minutes is up and my other canner is counting down. And we're going to wait till the plug is down for 10 minutes. Then we'll take the lid off. You want to slowly take the lid off and you can wait five more minutes before taking the jars out. Then you want to carefully place the jars on the counter using your spring-loaded jar lifters and make sure you have a towel or a cooling rack on the counter so they don't get thermal shock from the cold counter. And then the next day you want to wash the jars with soapy water and mark them and take them to your storage place. And during the winter you want to Enjoy those green beans that you grew during the hot summer heat.